starting point for, for WAF was this uh, small news item in the newspaper saying that uh, a man and a woman were going to be stoned to death for adultery. This was hair raising. It opened our eyes and we said this simply cannot happen and there's just no two ways about it. We sat there wondering what to do. Next day we called a meeting of all the NGO people that we knew. At that time, uh, women's rights organizations were not so many. There was just APWA. There was perhaps a family planning association, which was not a women's rights organization. And uh, a few others. Uh, Teri Kiniswa was being born at that time, the uh, theater. And that was it. That meeting turned out to be a totally crowded one. The room, and it was a pretty large room where we met. And eventually we came to the decision, that same meeting, that we needed a pressure group. What was the pressure group to be called? We went through various things and we came to the name Women's Action Forum. And the first task was to get in touch with lawyers and tell them, ask them how to interpret it, what can be done, what to do or not to do, and then uh, mobilize for uh, helping the woman in that case. And we fought this case. Khalid Ishaq was asked by WAF to take up uh, in the High Court, it was challenged and the um, sentence was set aside. So that was a great victory for us. Oh, before actually, I wouldn't say that it was really heaven for women in Pakistan, but we had no state laws, no legislation against women. Well, there were inadequate legislations. We needed to have more protection, but uh, there were no laws, anti-women laws. It was first made after Ziaul Haq promulgated the Sudud ordinances. Ziaul Haq's uh, impact was being felt by women. They were being, they felt they were being targeted. That the TV anchors had to wear dupattas and the chadar was being given out and was becoming part of the uniform. All that was already happening. On the streets, people were questioning women. Uh, police ones, men were asking for nikah namas if a couple was out. So all that environment was changing. Controlling women, which was not there before. Suddenly women were being controlled. They were being told how to move around, how to dress up, where to go, what to do, what time. This questioning of a woman uh, and what she should be doing and what she should not be doing, coming from the head of the government, uh, of the state. Since when did anyone have the right to uh, be the guardians of morality? As Women's Action Forum, we decided to come out on the streets. It was a kind of a reactive thing. There's anything from the government and we had to respond. That 1983 was a landmark. So they just wanted the group of women, I think 200, 250. And uh, they would just wanted to go to the High Court to present a petition against the law of evidence. As we got there, um, there were also a lot of men who were, uh, you know, supporters from university teachers, others, and Habib Jalib came. And he came and he started reciting his poem. And as he recited, the police uh, attacked him literally. He was an elderly man, they pulled him. That's when the women sort of all caught up. And uh, we were at that point negotiating how we would go. The police were saying, you can't go, and we were saying, we will go. And, you know, there was that kind of thing happening. All of a sudden, when they attacked, beat up uh, uh, Habib Jalib, that's when everybody just caught and said, we are going. And they pulled through the court, pushed through the court. And at that moment, I remember everybody started walking there and there was a police charge. And I, he, I saw the DSP himself, fat man, coming, he says, tear gas, like oh. and, and then the tear gassing started. But the way it was met with the force of the state, they were baton charged, there was tear gassing, they were harassed. And we ran down the footpath and, and I could hear people running behind me and finally I stopped. I said there was no point running because I didn't want to be pushed or something. And uh, the van was coming, the uh, police van and they were pulling, putting people in those. But a number of people actually managed to get to the court and uh, Asma climbed the gate and went in to, and we submitted the petition also. So uh, it really uh, enhanced the political appeal of WAF and it 
brought her into limelight. This was the first public protest against the martial law regime. One of the big, I think, uh, contribution of uh, Women's Action Forum is bringing out in the open um, uh, violence against women. I think uh, we were the first ones who talked about crimes against women, we used to call them. Well, we fought for Hudud ordinances for 25 years, almost 30 years, when uh, General Musharraf decided to water it down. And uh, though the law is still there, Hudud or ordinances have not been repealed. So I think what we have managed to do was to get the political parties activated to look at women's issues. Even the jamaat islami manifesto after that had a whole section on women. Now the agenda of women's rights is dear to everyone and it's being much talked about. But still practically there's a lot to be done.